Let's turn our Bible this morning to Hebrew chapter 11. I've been teaching you on the power of our tongue. And uh, it is good that we learn, we practice until we, you know, try to tune our tongue according to the word of God. Amen. That's very important. I started showing you that, you know, your tongue has the power to create. And, uh, you know, then I showed you that, you know, we bring out nearly one crore ten lakh words every year. Right? You started your 2019 and we are almost off of the year. I think you should have covered the off. <laughs> Thank God we have another off to complete this year. We'll make sure that we speak the good thing, good word what God wants to speak and we will see the blessing of God coming into our life. And if you know that there is power in your tongue, if you know that there is power in your tongue to create, I showed you last week how it is important for you to clean your tongue. You know, just like how you clean your physical tongue, it is more important to clean your, you know, words that comes with spiritual authority. Because we are spiritually alive this morning, we are not dead. The day we take Jesus, the Lord of our life, the day Jesus came into our life, no more you are dead spiritually, you are alive in Christ Jesus. I need to, you know, come in an awareness knowing that I am alive spiritually. Therefore, every word that I speak out through my mouth has spiritual authority. When it has spiritual authority, I must make sure that I take time to clean my tongue because my tongue forms words. Therefore, I will make sure that I will clean my tongue and bring out the word which will really produce the spiritual authority over my situation. This two experience is going to lead us to this today's teaching. You know, every sermon is a unique on its own, but you know, as you connect with, with what you learn, you understand a great truth which God wants to bring into your life. I want you to turn with me to Hebrew chapter 11. And we're going to start, uh, you know, seeing what the Lord wants to teach us regarding the tongue that God wants to, you know, equip and God wants to strengthen us. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3, it says, Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Look at how the author is trying to say, Through faith, we understand the world were framed by the word of God. So that, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Here God is trying to show you, you know, if you know there is power in your tongue to create, then you have to take effort to clean your tongue. And after cleaning your tongue, every word that comes out from your mouth is becoming very unique. And you see here, the Hebrew author says, don't conclude seeing the things which is available in this world thinking that these things were helpful to create the world. No. What God is trying to say is, you know, no matter what you see or what you don't see, I want you to believe that these worlds were framed by the word of God. That means God, when he spoke out certain words, you see there was formation, you see there was creation, you see there's change taking place. And God is trying to say, once you know there is power in your tongue to create, and once if you have taken caution to clean your tongue every day, you must be very careful in the beginning of your words. No matter what your situation this morning is, it might be a personal one, it might be your family, it might be your job, it might be your future, it might be your business. It might be anything, any financial crisis, sickness, whatever it is. No matter in what situation you stand, you face, you must understand in every situation of your life, we bring out some new words into that situation. We begin with words. When I go through a financial crisis, I begin to speak out some words. 
when i go through some problems i speak out some words so god is trying to say this morning you know don't forget if god used the word of god to frame this world means and every time when you go through a situation in your life a circumstances in your life don't forget you are also beginning to speak some words you're also pushed into a place where you bring out some words in your particular situations that's the picture the author is trying to give he's trying to say don't just try to stick on to believe this world was created with what i see what you see must let you know make you understand there is a god who created those things by his words therefore if god wants to create things in your life you must not forget god is going to th- create things in your life through the words that he brings out through your mouth i showed you last week you know god's word is conceived in your heart and then it is formed through your tongue and then you bring it out through your mouth you you speak out through your mouth and when you speak out god's word which is conceived through your mouth you see the spiritual force is backing to what you proclaim so here god is trying to teach us this morning if you know that the spiritual force the ability of god is backing in every word that you bring out through your mouth then you must be very careful in what you speak you know you must be careful you must take time to analyze the beginning words that comes out through your mouth in your situation you are not the first time speaker you know you are you are not speaking for the first time in your life and i say beginning of your words what do i mean when i say the beginning of the words it means you might be in a new situation you might be in some problem you might be in some kind of you know circumstances in your life in that particular time you know god is trying to show you there is there there is always some beginning words that we bring out through our mouth we proclaim some beginning words that beginning words is a glimpse of what god is going to do in your life let me say that again let me emphasize this you know quotation once again every time when you speak out the word of god which is conceived in your heart which has the spiritual authority which has the ability of god don't forget it gives you a glimpse of what god is about to do in your situation do you agree with me this morning if you speak apart from the word of god it also gives you a glimpse of what disaster failures and disappointment is going to come over your life it is important this morning my friend this it is it is we we got to make sure that i'm going to speak out the word of god because the word of god is going to me going to give me a glimpse of what god is going to do in my current situation in my particular need if you know that a uh, best example in the bible is the first book of the bible genesis chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning look at that word in the beginning you must never forget in every situation you begin with your words do you agree with me this morning you begin with some word you have to find out that's the word that i begin in my situation reflects the powerful word of god in my through my mouth or am i reflecting some other words god said in the beginning god created heaven and earth how did god create heaven and earth in the beginning he created it with through his word he spoke out and things came into existence look at that everything god created through words i want you to believe no matter what your situation this morning is your beginning words is going to give you a glimpse of what god can do for your life that's why it is important to conceive your heart with the word of god i took time to show you last week how important is to conceive your heart with the word of god 
Solomon says, you know, I stole the word of God into my heart. Why do I store it in my heart? Because that's the place where God is conceiving his word. And once the word is conceived in my heart, my tongue forms those words and I speak out and I see the authority and the power of God in the word that I declare. Therefore, I want you to picture yourself this morning, no matter what your situation is, God is trying to give you a caution, give you an awareness. Your beginning words in your right, in your current situation will give you a glimpse of what God is about to do in your life. That's very important. If you want to see God bringing his deliverance, doing his work in your situation, it is important to begin your situation with God's word. Come to a conclusion that I will declare the word of God which created this world. I'm going to declare that same word to create what God wants to do in my need, in my situation. And if you do that, you know, you see great changes takes place in our life. I'm going to talk on that. I'm going to elaborate a little on that and make you understand how important it is to stick on to the beginning of the words uh, that we speak. One thing that I have to analyze this morning is when I begin my words in my situation, does the words reflect the word of God, the power of God, the authority of God? Or is it reflecting something else? One thing, you know, when you look into Genesis chapter 1, you see God created heaven and earth through his word. And what's beautiful about it is, till today, you find that same word which God spoke is still able to hold what he formed. You able to get that picture this morning? Whatever God created through his word, you find that word of God is still sustaining it, still holding it, still you see things in existence. Why? Because whatever he spoke, it is obeying to the word of God. I want you to believe this morning, you know, whatever you speak, whatever the beginning words that you speak in your situation, it will obey because you are speaking the word of God which has the authority and power to change and to do wonders into your life. That's why it is important that we take time to find out what is my beginning words are. What do I speak? Do I speak apart from the power of God, the authority of God? Or am I blabbering something else? Am I proclaiming something else? Let me show you from the you know, Bible. You know, if you look into the life of Adam, you find God created you and me in, the, in, in his image. The reason why God created you and me in his image is because he wants you and me to practice whatever he has you know, uh, you know, perf performed. If God has a method to change your life, to change your situation, to change your problems. I need to stick on to that method. I need to practice those methods because I must come to a conclusion that God will never ever change his method to bless my life. I might have, you know, many, you know, methods in my life. If this doesn't work, I'm going to try another method. If this doesn't work for my family, then I'm going to try another method. If this doesn't work for my business, I'm going to try another method. We keep changing methods in our life. But God never ever changes his method. That's why he's trying to show you, you know, when he created you and me in his image, what is he trying to, you know, teach us? What is he trying to help us practice is that he's trying to say, just the way how I spoke and everything came into existence. I want you to believe when you speak, you know that your tongue has the power to create. You have 
taken time to clean your tongue now it is important that you begin your word with the word of god when you face some crisis begin those crises with the word of god because the word of god has the power to change your crisis do you agree with me this morning nothing else is going to change your crisis nothing else is going to meet your need only the word of god has the power to change your need to you know give you a solution give you an answer that's why it is important you find god is trying to teach this method and make adam to practice this method of speaking over things he called adam and said adam just the way i have spoken and created things on this earth i want you to speak over the animals and i want you to name those living creatures and whatever you name it will be called look at god is trying to demonstrate and teach the practice the method which the almighty god was you know you know using and he wants his you know child who was formed in the image of god he also wants him to use those you know practice into his life you find in that first chapter you know god is trying to proclaim everything through his spoken word and then you find god is you know asking adam to speak over the animal and name it what is it trying to teach us it's trying to teach us a you know good lesson that i need to follow the method that god almighty followed to create this world if you want to create something good which god has planned for your life in your situation god is trying to say just like how i made adam to speak over naming the animal i want you to speak over your situation speak my word because my word has the power and authority to bring a deliverance into your life this is how god created you and me this is how god wants you and me to practice but the problem with humanity is whatever god wants us to practice we will leave those practices and we will be trying everything else look at what happened the first time you know serpent when a you know, serpent entered into the garden of eden serpent spoke amazing it's surprising to eve you know she she's able to see the serpent is speaking and what was the first word serpent spoke go with me to genesis 3 let me let, let me let us look into it and let us see god also wants you to speak devil is also speaking over your life devil knows if i can deceive your words i can deceive your life devil knows that if you and i get deceived in our situation and speak the lie that devil is trying to bring into our life then he knows that you have given room for devil to ruin your life that's why god is trying to you know emphasize that just the way how i formed this worlds with my word i want you to know that is how i'm going to form and change your problems through the beginning of the words that comes out through your mouth in your right in your current crisis look at there with me genesis chapter 3 verse 1 now the serpent was more subtil than any beast of the field which the lord god has made and said unto the woman yea had god said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden if you read in niv version it comes out a little more interesting devil is trying to serpent is trying to ask eve did really god said to you that you should not eat of any tree look at that did really god said there is a question you know devil is trying to raise through that question devil wants to deceive the words that will come out from the mouth of eve and then you getting as you get in you know a little uh, was down 
you see devil is trying to say serpent is trying to say you will not die if you compare this you know devil is always trying to say the opposite of what god has spoken to adam and eve god spoke to adam and adam has passed that message to eve and now eve is in the trial of temptation and when in the trial of temptation satan serpent is trying to you know you know manipulate the truth of god into a lie you got to see that picture here you know god speaks the truth and devil manipulates the truth and turns it to a lie when we manipulate you know lie through the through our mouth we bring out when we bring out words of manipulation through our mouth you know you are giving room for devil to take you down look at that's happened in the life of eve she was taken down she looked into the fruit and it was you know good and it was pleasing she went and she ate she did not stop there she went spoke again with adam and made adam to eat that fruit along with her now look at what happened when you allow the beginning of word to deceive you you deceive yourself and you also deceive the people around you you see that in the life of eve satan serpent was trying to manipulate the truth of god into a lie god said you can eat every you know fruit of the garden except the fruit which is in the middle of the garden which gives you the knowledge of good and bad do not touch it do not eat it the day you touch and eat you will die now look at what satan is trying to say it's trying to manipulate it really did god said imagine if you ask somebody did, did he really say that you stop and think a little while you you you, you get a little confused you getting what i'm saying this morning when you hear somebody saying something and when somebody else comes and ask you did he really say that you know you're a little confused you take time to recollect all that you know and you get confused the moment you get confused the words that you speak will only proclaim confusion where you're giving power to devil to take you down in that situation that's very important my friend this morning she was deceived by the words of devil and she also deceived adam along with her now look at why this happened because the beginning word of the devil was a lie he asked it really god said and he said you will not die all this was a lie and those beginning words which entered into the heart of eve conceived in our heart formed by our words and she spoke out the lie therefore she and adam had to lose the blessing of god's you know eden this is how devil will always deceive us this is how always devil will try to take us down in our problems that's why this morning god is trying to show you your beginning words in your situations are very important to change your problems you say you know what's so important about it i don't mind what i speak you know my friend i want you to mind your words take time your beginning words is a glimpse of what it's going to reflect if your beginning words is god's word then you will see the reflection of god what he's going to do in your life if the beginning words uh, is a glimpse of devil's lie then you will see how devil is going to take us down in that problem that's why the word of god says death and power is in the power of your tongue death and life is in the power of your tongue blessing as curse is in the power of your tongue you can take your life to go higher and higher 
as well as you can push your life down into bondage again. That's why it is important, my friend, to take time to think on the beginning words that we speak in our situation. But look at the life of, you know, Mary, when you look in Luke chapter 1, the angel of the Lord appears to her and, she, and the angel says, you're going to give birth to a, 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 a Jesus who's the son of God. And if you read in uh, Luke chapter 1, 34, 35 and 38, uh, she asks a question, you know, I'm not married, I don't know a man, how is it possible for me to give birth to a, to a, a child? And the angel of the Lord sp continued to speak to her, say, the Holy Spirit will overshadow upon you and you will conceive and give birth to the Holy Child. And what I really liked about uh, Mary is that when you read verse 38, uh, she's trying to say, she did not deny it. She did not say, you know, find some other woman, find somebody else. Uh, she understood that's the truth. This is how God wants to deal to the humanity. You know, she accepted it. And when she accepted it, look at the word she's trying to say. Let it be according to thy word. My friend, this is a very important teaching this morning to our life. In every situation of my life, when God speaks to me, when there is a word of God in my heart, I got to declare, Lord, let it be according to to thy word in what I face right now. Whatever the crisis that you're going through, my friend, you got to accept and stand in a place like Mary where she said, let it be unto me according to thy word. Because she knew there is power in the word of God. She knew with this word, God created this whole universe. I see the universe I see how this universe was formed by the word of God. Now that same word is coming into my life to touch the life of humanity. Therefore, I receive that word. I conceive that word. And I'm going to give birth to a holy child. And she said, let it be according to thy word. That's the first word. God wants you to speak in your situation. What do we speak when God says something to us, when God puts an inspiration into your heart through the word of God, you know, do you accept it or do you resist it? Do you say, I don't think I should say, say this? Do you, you, do you say, I don't have to hold on to this? No, my friend. Because the beginning words that you speak in your situation is the glimpse of what God wants to do in your life. The beginning words apart from God Apart from the words of God, the word of God, if devil is trying to, trying to manipulate the word of God and if he's trying to change the picture apart from what God has spoken to you, if you're going to speak that, that's going to be the glimpse of your life. What I liked about Mary, she said, let it be done according to thy word. My friend, I want you to speak like that's the beginning of your words in your situation. You got to say, Lord, let it be according to thy word. Because your word says, you will never leave me nor forsake me. Your word says, those who trust you, they will never be ashamed. Your word says, in your darkness, I am your light. Your word says, I will bless the work of your hand. Your word says, that's, that's the beginning of your word in your situation. That's the beginning. Words which God wants you to speak in your situation. Say to God, say to your situation, Lord, let it be according to thy word. That's very important, my friend. Let me take you to two part of, you know, uh, words this morning and show you the difference and the power in what we, you know, sp speak in our situation. Turn with me to First Peter chapter 1, First Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. Why it is important that you speak your beginning words, uh, the word of God, 
Look at here how Peter is trying to say when he writes to the people of God, he's trying to say, being born again, not of a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Look at that. Why should I say, just like Mary said, Lord, let it be according to thy word, because you must know that the word of God will restore you, will revive you, will make you to, you know, go through the experience of born again. It will tell you that you are the child of God. It will tell you that you are not a sinner, you are the child of God. And God is saying, that word, which is incorruptible seed, which is the word of God, has been, you know, into your life. That word has made you to born again. That word has restored you. That word has refreshed your life. That word has strengthened you. That word has the power to change your life, to change your situation. That's why it is important, my friend. You have to know that the word of God will restore you, will remind you that you are born again. It will refresh your soul. It will refresh your mind. It will transform your thinking. What happens when there is a transform through the, you know, incorruptible seed, which is the word of God, you come to an assurance that God will change my crisis. God will take care of my need. God will take care of this problem. I don't have to just bang my head. I'm just going to turn it to God and God is going to take it and he will take care and he will give me the right answer to my need. And like it says, you know, not with the corruptible seed. That means every other word is corruptible. You're getting that picture this morning? Every other word is corruptible. Look at Eve used the words of serpent. It corrupted her. It corrupted her mind. It corrupted her husband. It corrupted their family. It corrupted them to leave from the blessing of God. But the word of God is incorruptible. It's a precious one. It's a holy word. It is a powerful word. It has the authority. It has the power to create form. That word has made you to born again. You are born again with a word which can never be corrupted. No matter how much you have taken down in your life, this word again can build you up. Do you agree with me this morning? Amen. This word can build you up. This word can strengthen you. This word will show you the way in which you have to walk. This word will show you what word should you speak in your situation. This word shows you that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This word shows that you are a co-heir with Christ Jesus. Why this word shows all these? Because it's incorruptible. Every corruptible word will take you away from the promise, will take you away from the blessing. But God is trying to say, I have redeemed you. I have made you to be my child, not with the corruptible seed, but with the incorruptible seed. That's the word which formed the world, that same word is going to form your life. That same word is going to bless your life. Peter says like this, you know, he's trying to say, don't forget, the incorruptible word of God is a seed which refreshes you, which restores you, which makes you to live like a born again. All things have passed away, Behold, everything becomes new. It helps you to live like a new man with a new attitude, with a new approach, with a new spiritual authority, with a new spiritual matureness. That's the, you know, power of the word of God. And you find Paul is trying to say in another place in 2 Corinthians, go with me to 2 Corinthians. 
you have to understand, you know, I must say, Lord, let it be according to thy word. Mary understood the power behind the word of God. She sees it with her natural eyes. When she sees the things that God has created in this world, it is a proof that, you know, he formed everything through his word. Therefore, that same word God is speaking to me. Therefore, I'm going to say, let it be according to thy word, O God. And God is trying to remind you that, you know, you are not, you know, redeemed by the corruptible seed. You are born again with the incorruptible seed, which can never be destroyed. Heaven and earth may pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. How many of you believe that this morning? With that word, God has redeemed you. With that word, you are born again. And with that word, God wants to begin your situation. You're getting that picture this morning? I'm going to show you. I'll show you an example from the Bible. We'll find out where we stand this morning. Let me, let me read from verse 17. I want you to look into your Bible. We're going to read from verse 17 to 19. A beautiful, you know, picture Paul is trying to show. You know, Peter said, don't forget the word of God is an incorruptible seed. Every other word is corruptible. The truth of God is always incorruptible. And here look what Paul says. He's talking about your new experience, your born again experience, you're a new creature. You know, he's trying to say in verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given us the ministry of reconciliation. Look at here, he's trying to say, he has made you a new person, you are a new creature, you are a new person now. And after you becoming a new person, there are some responsibilities that God is handling into your hand to live like a new, new person, a new man. He's trying to say, ministry of reconciliation has been given into your hand, just like how I have reconciled your sin to the Father. Now the ministry of reconciliation is into your hand. It doesn't stop there. Look in verse 18, verse 19. It says, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has commanded unto us, the word of reconciliation. Look at that's the you know, point I want to make here. Peter says the word of God is an incorruptible seed. With that God has redeemed you. With that God has made you born again. And here after born, being born again, after being a new person, here Paul is trying to say God has given you the word of reconciliation. Can you see the comparison there? Word of reconciliation. What word do you speak? Do your word reconcile? Do your word, you know, bring people together? Or your word breaks the relationship, you know, breaks things in your life? The incorruptible word of God will never break things. It will, you know, make things to come together. That's why here Paul says, don't forget, you have the word of reconciliation. I remember I was so thrilled to read the bibliography of uh, Nelson Mandela. We all know about him, a great man, a great freedom fighter, you know. He did a great thing for his people. To get that freedom... He was, in, he was put into prison for 30 years. Throughout the 30 years, you know, he had gone through pain and, you know, uh, embarrassment which cannot be shared. The jailer will always come to this Nelson Mandela's room and he will talk to him. After talking and ailing at him, then while he wants to go, what he will do is he will pass urine over his face. 30 years, this man suffered this horrible pain. After 30 years, when he came out,
people elected him to become the president of that country. And after becoming the president of that country, after a while, he had an opportunity to meet this jailer who did all this painful thing to his life. This man, when he saw Nelson Mandela being the president, he was shivering because he knew how much horrible pain that he has caused into the life of this man. Though this man was standing out and he was shivering and he doesn't know what to do. He cannot run, he cannot hide now because Nelson Mandela have seen him. And you know, he asked, uh, the president asked his assistant to go bring that man to him. He took that man with him to a hotel. He made him to sit right in front of his table. He ordered good food for that man. He asked him, are you comfortable? Are you okay? Are you happy? He never talked about what he did to his life. But he encouraged him. He made sure that he is comfortable in whatever the, you know, uh, trouble right now he is facing. He gave him good food. And we, he spoke to him in a very nice way. And after a you know, few minutes, he said, thank you for your time. And he walked out. This man was stunned. This man was like, you know, like a dead man standing, don't know what to say. He thought that this man is now with the power and authority. His one word can destroy, can kill my life. But this Nelson Mandela, the president, he doesn't want to kill people. He wants to show how he can bring people together through his lovable words. My friend, God has given you the ministry of reconciliation, also the word of reconciliation. This man, you know, who was treated in a nice way, the jailer went and wrote an article saying that, I have never seen a person like Nelson Mandela. Look at the approach, my friend. He know that, the, you know, Nelson Mandela had the power and authority over his word, but he never misused his word. He never allowed the words to crush somebody, but rather he made sure that it becomes a comfortable word to the person who meets him. My friend, in your situation, your words matters more. You must never forget you have the word of God which is incorruptible. You have the word of God which has the power to reconcile. Word of reconciliation. If you know this, you will bring out the word of God into your situations. I don't know what your crisis this morning is. I don't know what is your need. I don't know what... There are something that is really troubling you, taking you down in your life. And you always, when you think about it, you are disturbed. God is speaking to you, my friend. In those situations, begin your words, which has the power, which will never corrupt, which is an incorruptible seed. Use the power of God's word. Use the word of reconciliation, which has the power to bring people together, relationship together, things together. It will bless your life. Don't worry about people who have troubled your life. Don't worry about them, you know. If Nelson Mandela could forgive him to, you know, bring out a word of reconciliation, you know, why can't we do it? If you know there is power in your tongue, if you know... Your tongue has the power to create. If you have taken time to clean your tongue, every word that you begin in your situation will be the word of God, will proclaim the power and the love and the you know, care and the reconciliation that you are ready to do. Let me show you one illustration from the Bible and then let me pray for you this morning. Turn with me to 2 Kings. 2 Kings. 
chapter 6. What we speak about our family, what we speak about our children, what we speak about our day-to-day affairs, what we speak about things that is happening around us, will only change when you speak the incorruptible word of God. Will only change when you speak the word of reconciliation. Do you agree with me this morning? Look at there is a situation here, you know, you find the Syrian army came to capture, to, you know, catch hold of the prophet Elijah. Now they have come to the place called Dothan, there is the man of God. The reason why they have come there is because the Syrian king was really troubled, really upset because every plan that he's trying to attack the people of God, they know it and they escape from that, you know, plan. And now this king was confused and he called his people and asked, how come, you know, every plan is being disposed to our, you know, uh, opponent uh, whom we want to fight? Uh, and there was a news told uh, to him saying that there is a man of God who will tell even what you do inside your bedroom. So this king said, all right, if he is so powerful, why don't you bring him into, into my bedroom so that I can, you know, plan and do things? So he sent his army and they, they encamped around the mountains of Dothan. Now, you know, you find in verse 15, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15, you find they came in the night and was, when, it was, when it was early morning, the servant of Elijah got up. Elisha got up and he just went out and when he was about to open his eyes and he saw the chariots and the horses and you know army men of Syrian who has encamped the whole place. Now looking at the you know power of the enemy, this servant was really afraid. He don't know what to do. You know, he, he thinks that our life is finished. Now when he stands in a situation where there is trouble, pain and fear encamped into the life of that servant. I want you to look at the beginning words that he spoke. Who are we when we stand in our crisis? Do we speak the beginning words like the servant of Elisha or we speak like this, you know, uh, the prophet Elisha, or we speak like the prophet Elisha. Elisha. Now look with me in verse 15. It says, And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city both with horses and chariot. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? What is he trying to say? Literally saying, Ayo. Sometimes we say that, you know. When we say, when we, when we face some problem, when we see somebody really hurting us, when we see somebody, you know, taking what belongs to us, what do we say? Take it, take it. Do we say it like that? Uh, we say, Ayo. Will he be good? You know. Every rubbish word will come. What is the beginning words that you speak when you face trouble? Here you find the servant of the man of God is speaking. He's saying, what are we going to do? How are we going to escape? There is no way for us to escape from the hands of Syrian. Those words will really put you into that position. But what I like about the prophet Elisha is you find the next verse, you find what he's saying. I want every one of us to be like uh, this man of God, Elisha, because the words that he spoke uh, is giving us a lesson. What should be the beginning words 
in our day to day crisis. Look at that verse 16. And he answered, Fear not. How many times do we say that? Fear not. When, you know, wife is scared, when husband is scared, do the wife say to husband, Fear not? Do the husband say to wife, Fear not? They join together and get afraid. There are, there are times like that. But here the man of God says, Fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Look at that word. Look at the beginning words when the prophet is facing the same problem what his servant was facing. Look at how he's approaching and look at the words that his servant spoke and look at the words the man of God is speaking. Where are we standing in our life when we face these kinds of situations? You might not have a chariot, you might not have a house, you might not have soldiers coming and, you know, surrounding you. But let me tell you, financial problem is surrounding you, sickness is surrounding you, weakness is surrounding you, confusion is surrounding you. What not? You can name it, you know, you can just go on. The list will go on. When everything surrounds you, I need to say, fear not. And look at what Elijah is saying. He's saying, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Do you know that? The God who is with you is greater than the one who is working against your life. God is great. I need to believe that. I need to see in such a way to bring out the words in my situation saying, no matter how big is my enemy, I have a God who is greater than anyone. Amen. Amen. This is the beginning words which God wants you to bring out. If, you're, if you clean your tongue every day, if you know that there is power in your tongue to create, uh, the beginning words will be just like the prophet El Elisha, who said, we have a greater army on our side. We have a greater God on our side. Be not afraid. You will have a boldness. You will have a courage. You will have that encouragement, knowing that no matter what happens, the Almighty God is always on my side. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in this world. Do you agree that this morning? We like to say it, but we don't like to practice it. Sometimes when you hear this, the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in this world, you get excited in the church. You got to get excited in your problem thinking this verse. Because you should know the God who's fighting for me will never be defeated. He will always be successful when he fights for me. Amen. Till today he has been successful to me. He's been successful to you. Tell me in what way will God be defeated? No way, no power could ever defeat the God who is on my side. Amen. That should be the beginning of your words, beginning words in your situation. I remember two boys were arguing in the class. And the class teacher entered into the classroom and asked this two boys, why are you arguing? What's wrong? And the two boys said, we found a 2,000 rupees note on the floor. And the argument is, we will only give to a person who says the biggest lie. The teacher looked at these two boys and said, are you not ashamed of yourself? And she said, when I was like you, I never know what, is, what lie will be like. So these both boys decided one thing, you know, they said, they took that 2,000 rupees and they went to the teacher and said, teacher, this, this is for you. This belongs to you. By your words, uh, people can calculate your weight. Uh, by your words, you can see the glimpse of your life. Uh, my friend, this morning, 
you must be careful with your words in your situation. Because the beginning words in your situation is a glimpse of what God is about to do in your life. Do you want to see the glimpse of God or do you want to see the glimpse of devil? How many of you say, I want to see the glimpse of God through the words that I proclaim? Shall we stand to our feet and let's pray? I know God is teaching us. This is a very powerful and a blessing teaching to your life. Because we don't stop talking. We don't do that. The only place you don't talk is when you hear a sermon. Right? Apart from that, once you leave, once you just, you know, go after the service, we speak. You must know how powerful is the words that we bring out through our mouth. Shall we lift our hands and give God glory this morning? Father God, we thank you for speaking to our life. Thank you for showing us that our tongue has the power to create and thank you for helping us to clean our tongue every day. And thank you, Lord, for taking time to emphasize and make us understand that we should begin words in our situation which should be the word of God. Nothing apart from your word should ever come out of my mouth, O oh God. Guard my mouth in such a way that I will proclaim your word and I will see the glimpse of what God is about to do for me today, tomorrow, and in the days to come. I pray that your people will enjoy to see what God is about to do in their life. I pronounce your blessing upon your people, O oh God. Let every work that they put forth, their hand be blessed. I pray all their needs shall be supplied according to the richest glory in Christ Jesus. Let this word be proclaimed over their situation, O God. Just like Mary said, let it be according to thy word, O God. We also say together this morning, let it be according to thy word into my situation, into my problem, into my need, into my expectation, into my future, O God, into my job, into my business. Let it be according to thy word. Help us to grow in the word of God. Help us to meditate. Lord, just uh, listening to your sermon is not enough, Lord. Lord, help us to practice what you have made us to listen this morning and help us to more concentrate and meditate on the word of God because every time when we speak uh, the beginning words, which is the word of God, into our problems, into our crisis, there comes the change that God wants to bring into our life. Uh, we believe that this morning we will take the change that God is bringing into our life. We believe that you will bless us. We believe that you will change things for us. We believe that you are opening doors for us. We believe that God is doing wonders over our life. We believe it, O oh God. We know how you're going to do it. You're going to, go, you're going to do it through the words that we speak through our mouth. I bless your people. Continue to guard them, guide them. Lead them in your precious word. We give you glory, we give you honor. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.